Good morning. In addition to our mass intentions this day, let us also remember our first and frontline responders, our local faith communities, family and friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers gather this day to give thanks and praise to Almighty God. We once again open our minds and hearts to his ongoing call to mercy, healing, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after making us always determined to carry out the good works of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love you have demonstrated for his name by having served and continuing to serve the Holy Ones. We earnestly desire each of you to demonstrate the same eagerness for the fulfillment of hope until the end, so that you may not become sluggish, but imitators of those who, through faith and patience, are inheriting the promises. When God made the promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself and said, I will indeed bless you and multiply you. And so, after patient waiting, Abraham obtained the promise. Now, men swear by someone greater than themselves. For them, an oath serves as a guarantee and puts an end to all argument. So when God wanted to give the heirs of his promise an even clearer demonstration of the immutability of his purpose, he intervened with an oath, so that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to hold fast to the hope that lies before us. This we have as an anchor of the soul, sure and firm, which reaches into the interior behind the veil, where Jesus has entered on our behalf as forerunner, becoming high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark.
As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need, and he and his companies, companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God when Abathar was high priest, and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of God is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, it's kind of funny. We don't have too many names of the Pharisees. I'd love to use one of their names and say, you know, old so-and-so. Da, 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 da. Anyway. The Pharisees, another objection. Nitpicky. Nitpicky. We have to do this because da-da-da-da. We have to do that because of da-da-da-da-da. It's like, Sometimes they're like chicken little with their heads cut off, running around like the sky is falling. Dude, get a clue, wake up, smell the coffee. This is the Son of God. He's allowed to change the rules. So don't live by your own rules. Don't impose your own rules on other people. Unjustly, unfairly. Now, if it is a just and fair guideline, then use it, especially in families growing up. No harm, no foul there. It's how we learn to be decent members of society. We learn the parameters, the norms, the regulations, and responsibilities. That's a good thing. Because we learn how to get along that much better. But don't become self-righteous and pick and choose what you like and what you don't like and say, well, this is what we, everybody should follow. This is what everybody has to do. Jesus is saying, you have to see the bigger picture. You've taken all the little bits and pieces you like, you've proof texted, and you said, this is it. And anyone else is too far outside the box, oh well. The Sabbath is made for us, to make us better, to make us holy, not to ignore it. Because there are some, and I just know the thoughts, oh, well, good, I don't have to go to church on Sunday, I don't have to flip on the uh, YouTube channel. Isn't that lovely, Father Mike? Thank you so much. That's not what I am saying. All of this is to make us better people. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it Separately, we cannot do it in a bubble or a vacuum. We live on the same piece of dirt whirling around in space called the earth. We live on it together. We must grow together. We must learn to find answers together. We have seen and experienced so much divisiveness. so much of the Pharisees' attitude everywhere that it has pervaded our own human hearts at times to a greater or lesser degree. Enough. Enough. Grow up. Get over it. And get moving along. Move along together. Understand what Jesus is trying to tell us, that Pharisaical part of our own human hearts, trying to tell us in the 21st century. Yes, it's tough. Because we are a people of habit and routine, and we like it. Now, don't mess with my routine. Because it upsets my apple cart. It causes me to have to think more. Sometimes to second-guess myself. Sometimes to make sure of things. Well, isn't that maybe a good thing sometimes? Doesn't it become a good thing if we think outside of our own box and say, oh, well, the world's bigger than just my box. 
And I guess just because it doesn't fit in my box, I still have to acknowledge it, to deal with it, to learn to interact with it on a better plane, in a better way. Just because it doesn't fit in my box, maybe I've got the wrong things in my box. Maybe I have to kind of sort through and do a little spring cleaning and say, ooh, no, that's not really good. That's what I grew up with, but yeah, maybe not the best thought. I can remember one time, I must have been eight or nine, and my grandmother was visiting. And we all know how it is when grandma visits. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm My grandmother grew up in a time when there was a definite separation of people and color and faith, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We were somewhere, now this is back in the days when you could say, all right, you could stay here, I'm gonna run into the store and I'll be right back. No, okay. And there was no problem. I don't know how this is a long time ago. And she met somebody and used a term that just mortified me. It's like, I can't believe she said that. Don't take that in my box. Get rid of that. That's offensive. We have to grow. We don't stop growing unless we choose to stop growing, unless we choose to be stagnant and stale. We must keep growing from point A, that is the moment of birth, to point B, the moment of death. If we stop growing, then there's a problem. And that's what Jesus simply points out to the Pharisees. You're stuck. You're stuck in a rut. You have your little box. And if we don't fit your mold or fit in your box, you don't really care about us. You want to do everything you can to get rid of us. Be careful. Because all too easily, you can get rid of God. That's a great challenge among the millennials. Extremely self-centered. Talk about the me generation. That pales in comparison. Remember John F. Kennedy. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Ask not what God can do for you as like a little dancing Santa Claus on a string, but what you can do for God. What God is challenging you to do, what God is asking you to do today and tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. Grow up. Get over it. Become a part of the thing called life. Understand that we're all on the same planet at the same time together. God forbid that we should have to face some other challenge like COVID-19. But if we do, and we do not stand together in unison as one people, working together for the good of all people. It may be our own undoing. We stand in a moment of time where we can make a greater difference than any politician has ever done in the history of this earth because we believe, we have faith, we know that God calls to us in the depths of our hearts. You will do greater things than I have done. Those are the words of Jesus. If you don't believe it, remain self-centered. Keep your little box, put it up on your shelf, dust it off every now and then, and say, that's all that matters. Everything else, meh. Oh, well. But if you have any shred in the depths of your human heart where there is the divine, that spark of divine life that calls to you, sometimes nags at you, or me, and the box isn't big enough, the box is too small. Do we even need a box? Probably not. If we cannot take the good in our hearts with us and journey through life, no box or bag or trunk or whatever is going to matter. All that is just stuff. What matters is what we take with us in the depths of our hearts, 
and live to the fullness for the good of all. And that is not self-centered. It is not one-upmanship. It is not I'm better than you kind of thing. We live in a time of great challenge, a time of great decision. How do we get over our own self? Self-centeredness, jealousy, whatever it is, how do we get over that huge speed bump not get high-centered on it and keep moving forward as one people together? You're smart, you're intelligent. I leave it to you. I leave it to you. God has blessed you enough to know what needs to be done for the good of this world, for the good of all people. And I simply pray that you have that moment of clarity, clarity of mind, heart, spirit, and soul, to know what will truly bring healing and hope, peace, goodwill, all of the things that we prize to be one people of God, one people together on this planet, and move forward into that which God provides. God's desire is not death and destruction. It is life to the fullness. He challenges the Pharisee in our hearts today and every day. Understand what is important. Move forward into the good that God hopes we will see and achieve. In the waters of baptism, we have become the children of God. And so let us offer our prayers and petitions with great confidence and hope this day. That all the baptized may live together in unity, peace, and faithfulness to the gospel of Christ. We pray to the Lord. That those who have been appointed as leaders in nations, leaders of peoples, may respect religious freedom throughout the world and work diligently to bring about unity, justice, and peace for all. We pray to the Lord. That God will bring an end to the health pandemic and restore life in its fullness to all. We pray to the Lord. That all first and frontline responders may be blessed with compassion and renewed by the grace of the Holy Spirit as they strive to meet the needs of those they are called to serve, heal, and protect, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died may be forever blessed in the light, happiness, and peace of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers, hopes, and petitions we hold this day in the silence of our hearts, God of justice, mercy, and compassion, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, help us to be faithful followers of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we strive to bring peace and unity among all people. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, and the sacrifices of our own lives, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful people this day, along with these sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of faith and devotion, we may one day enter into the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask. By that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, 
and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of all reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm, in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, Alberto, the bishop of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Grant kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. United this day in voice and heart, and joining Christians throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, let us once again echo the prayer of the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church gathered here this day, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, truly for our world this day, for those who are near and dear to us, we offer a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ My sisters and brothers, at this time I invite you to pray the prayer for a spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord, as you strengthen us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, may you always make us sharers of his divine nature. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remaining with you now and forever. Our celebration is ended. We go forth each day to love and serve the Lord.